Right, now I've set up all the icons, they're in the correct placement, I'm happy with where they are. They look pretty cool. And I've also got this thing in the middle which sort of gives a bit of difference which I've nearly crashed. Now from here, I need to design a background which has shadows and glow. So first I'm going to find the background which I have already found. And if I go over here, I found this background from Deviant Art, which is a very good website for backgrounds. And it's the iPad background. and it is mirrored. They've taken it off the original iPad and they've mirrored some certain points of it but it still looks pretty good so I'm going to use it anyway. So I'm going to save the image. As you can see I've got the image here now and it is in my folder. Now I'm just going to open it in Microsoft Office Picture Manager because that is my favorite program for basic image editing. And I already know that this image is not my screen monitor size and it has to be if this is going to work properly. So, as I can see, it is 1920 by 1200, which is a 16 by 10 ratio. But my screen is 1920 by 1080. So I need to crop that image. Now to resize my image or crop it, I'm going to go into the edit pictures. Oh, and this program, everyone has it. I'm serious. If you have Microsoft Office, you have this program. You go edit pictures, crop. It's 1200 pixels tall. So I have to count it out to make it 1080, so I have to remove 120, so I'm going to remove 120 pixels from the bottom. And that, that's pretty much, I can pretty much chuck it around to wherever I want, but I'm alright with this height. Okay, looks good. Press save. Now you want to set this as your desktop wallpaper to see how it will look. And also for positioning purposes, so right click on it, set as desktop background. And as you can see, it's doing some funny effects. And there it is. It is set as my background. Now the things missing are the shadows and the glow, which I'm going to get into right now. This is where paint.net comes in, which I'll show you how to download very quickly. So if you go to getpaint.net, it links you to this website where you have a link. It's just here in this top corner. You can save it, paint.net version 3.5 at the moment. And install it how you would normally install a program. Once that is installed, which should be very simple, it's a very easy process, open the folder and open your image in paint.net this time. Now it is in a nice editing software, this can be done in Photoshop also as well. Now you need to take a photo, not a photo, a screenshot of your desktop so you have an idea of where things will be lined up. So I'm going to go to my desktop and And then from there, you want to take your screenshot image and open it in paint.net as well. And they are both directly on top of each other. I'm just going to copy it over into this image. Cancel that, add a new layer, and then copy it on top. So as you can see, I have a shot with and a shot without the layers. Quite simple. Now, what I need to do is draw a black square. And that is quite simple. Just drawing a square, you go into this area, you draw draw filled shape, and draw a black square where you think the shadow would be good. So over there should be right. And that is just messed up because I did it in the wrong layer. I'll draw it in a new layer. Draw a black square. And you sort of just want to draw a black square for every single one. Just like that. Just draw over it. If you want more perfection, you can just copy and paste, which I'm going to do right now. Copy, paste. Move it over here. Copy, paste. Move it over here. Copy, paste. Move it over. Oh, wait. Just move it over here. It's pretty good. It doesn't have to be perfect because it's going to be changed anyway. Then I can just draw another black square over here. Another black square over here. Another black square over here. Now I've got black squares. And I can go Effect, Blur, Gaussian Blur. Now if I blur it enough, you can suddenly see that all of these icons have... It looks like a shadow. 50 seems alright. So I'm going to press OK. And now if I remove the layer, the middle layer, which I pasted on top, which I took from a screenshot, you just have a background image with shadows. It's quite cool works quite well. Some shadows will be bigger than others, so I suggest you copy and paste, but I was just drawing very fast. Now you want to save this image, this modified image, 
as a PNG and save it as probably uh, shadows just for now, just to see how it looks. Okay, flatten. Go into your folder and set it as a background. Now you will notice no difference from where I am right now, but if I go back, every single one has a shadow. Now, this is where a lot of fine tuning comes in. If you think the shadow is too dark, you go back into paint.net and I just undo. I normally just undo so I can get all the layers back. You can change the layer opacity, double click and make it less dark. So 150 should be alright and then I can just save it again. That's pretty much what you're going to be doing, fine tuning. Keep doing it until you find that it is correct. I'm going to show you how to do the glow now. This one is a bit harder. I go into the layer and now I have to I'm going to duplicate it in case I make a mistake which is always a good thing to do. Hide the bottom one which I just have in the layer panel. Top layer. I'm going to delete everything around the icons. So I just want the icons. So delete this. Delete this, delete this, uh, oops, wrong layer, delete this, too much, delete this, delete this, you can get quite close, everything in the end is blurred, so it's alright, I should have gone down, delete, just try to get through each row, delete here, delete here, here and this is where you cannot really move your icons anymore because if you change it you've messed up your whole entire background which you've spent hours creating not hours all right it does not have to be perfect also as well but you do want to make it sort of just sort of like mask out the squares I'm doing this quite quickly for tutorial purposes not to make it too long Alright, now I've got all of the icons separated. If I put this on, it looks like the background before it was, because the image is all the same. Now from here, I'm just going to Gaussian Blur it again. Maybe not 50, but enough to give it a sort of cool feel. 25, halfway, pretty good. Okay. And you notice that I didn't exactly have to get too close because it looks good anyway. Okay. I set up the background, and now I've got this which is some blurry icons if I did this without the shadows it would just be glowing icons but I like the shadows then you can enable the shadows underneath the glow and there you've got glowing with shadows save this in your folder as glow probably just for testing purposes as I say last time go into your folder and glow set as desktop background and suddenly the icons have a glow and they also have a shadow and this actually looks better than the last one I did which is actually quite amazing and I've done a good job now some glows will look better than others the Google Chrome I actually really like the glow because it's sort of like makes the Google Chrome letters glow out of the icon very cool that is pretty much it for the background stage now it looks perfect you can adjust the glow you can adjust the shadows and really at this stage I'm only using windows for all of this I could just close this HTC home which I'm using for the clock and it would still be all in just windows